Hi, I'm John the Mouse. In this video, we are going to talk about diesel and why it was changed to ultra low sulfur diesel. At the same time, we'll touch on ethanol as that's part of the plan. This is some of the stuff I go over in detail at John the Mouse University. With better information, you can make better decisions, not only on your transportation business, but on your own personal transportation. So let's get into it. I'm going to take you through why fuel is so important that you want to add fuel additive to improve your fuel. Even if you're running a gas engine, it does seem counterintuitive to add more expense to your fuel after I suggest you need to keep your fuel expenses as low as possible for operating your transportation company. It is your largest expense running your business. First, you need to understand a little bit about diesel and how it has changed to ultra-low sulfur diesel. Back in 1970, the Congress in the USA government passed the Clean Airs Act to reduce harmful emissions from automobiles. Maintaining and improving environmental quality, clean air and clean water, the wise use of our land, the protection of wildlife and natural beauty, parks for all to enjoy. These are part of the birthright of every American. To guarantee that birthright, we must act, and act decisively. It is literally now or never. During the past three years, we have made a good start. We have passed new laws to protect the environment, and we have mobilized the power of public concern. But there is much yet to be done. Eighteen of the major environmental proposals which I put forward a year ago has still not received final action by the Congress. I repeat today my urgent request for congressional action on this much needed legislation. And I am also presenting a number of new proposals. The environmental agenda now before the Congress includes laws to deal with water pollution, pesticide hazards, ocean dumping, excessive noise, careless land development, and many other environmental problems. These problems will not stand still for politics or for partisanship. They demand to be met now. By meeting them now, we can make 1972 the best year ever for environmental progress. The time has come for man to make his peace with nature. Let us renew our commitment let us redouble our effort. The quality of our life on this good land is a cause to unite all Americans. The Clean Air Act was changed in 1990, requiring stricter emissions, reductions of hydrocarbons, particulate matter. Uh, he is the first president to ever actually set auto uh, emission standards. Previously, Congress has done all of the work. The EPA and prior administrations were not able to conclude uh, their work, and so Congress would step in. Uh, with respect uh, to tailpipe emissions, automotive emissions, uh, the president uh, announced tougher standards for cars, uh, a significant reduction uh, for car emissions, and for the first time ever, uh, SUVs, uh, sport utility vehicles, will be brought into the same pollution control program as automobiles. Um, I would also note uh, that uh, today's announcement includes the very, very large SUVs, uh, those that weigh more than 8,500 pounds, which have just uh, come into the market in the last uh, year or so. So it picks up all passenger vehicles, uh, minivans, uh, trucks, sport utility vehicles, brings it into one program with the cars, then lowers the standards uh, to a .07 average. Uh, the second thing that the president announced are cleaner fuels, essential to the good operation of a catalytic converter, uh, essential to the emissions, uh, to lowering emissions from cars, are fuels uh, with much less sulfur in them. And so we are announcing a 90% um, redu reduction in sulfur uh, content uh, in fuels. The EPA changed it again in June 2006 
requiring the sulfur limit in diesel from 500 parts per million down to 15 parts per million. Under the Clean Air Act, the first year that we can require uh, these changes, these pollution reductions, is model year 2004. And in fact, we take full advantage of what the law allows is requiring that the Detroit and the other manufacturers uh, start converting their fleets in model year 2004. We also allow uh, an early credit uh, for uh, electric vehicles and other ultra clean uh, vehicles. Uh, if they will bring them into the market uh, next year, they can receive some early credits. Uh, this is a way to stimulate new technologies uh, to help introduce consumers to new technologies. Um, I think it's uh, important to note uh, that this is the first time we've ever taken a systems approach. Historically, Congress would do the work of tailpipe emissions and then EPA would come along and do fuels. We're doing them together because what comes out of your tailpipe is a function of the standards for the car and the gasoline you put in. So for the first time ever, we do them together. The standards are fuel neutral. It doesn't matter if you put gas in or you put diesel in. If you are a passenger vehicle, an SUV, a minivan, a car, you have to meet the standards regardless of the fuel you use. The president also announced a commitment to cleaner diesel fuels, a rulemaking which EPA uh, is initiating and will complete uh, in uh, the next uh, year. Now, don't take me wrong. I'm not saying that we don't need a change. I just don't like it the way they sell it to the American people by, by them saying that there's a very minimum cost to the average citizen. In the end, you, the average citizen, pays for it all. As product gets shipped halfway around the world, polluting as it goes. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you two questions. You mm -hmm. said, first of all, the consumer won't notice any difference. Right. But in fact, the cars and light trucks will be more expensive and the gasoline will be more expensive, right? First of all, let's talk about um, the cost. Um, we estimate for cars about $100 for the new catalytic converters. Uh, for an SUV, uh, approximately $200, $250. You're talking about a vehicle that costs something on the order of $35,000 or $40,000. Uh, when you think about uh, the the what this does for clean air, when you think about the public health benefits, this is an incredibly cost-effective way to getting cleaner air. Uh, in terms of fuels, uh, we estimate about two cents a gallon. The industry has a higher estimate. I will tell you something. For the last 25 years, when EPA has estimated cost of pollution reductions and industry has estimated, uh, we both tend it to be wrong. It actually ends up being cheaper. Uh, technology does more than what people expect. A good old American ingenuity rises to the occasion and we find cheaper solutions. I hope you can see how this works. First, we have a president that gets the ball rolling. In this case, it's the EPA. The people in charge of the agency spend several administrations pushing their agendas that they have going. If you can spot a trend faster, you can position yourself better in life to profit from it. As of right now, lots of Americans are still buying cheap crap that doesn't last, so they will have to buy more if they have the money. That's why it's important to keep your operating expenses low so you're ready for the lean times when people run out of money so they have to start selling their assets off. We will go more into this in the finance part of the course. The next section we're going is to get into the nitty gritty of diesel.